It's a fabulous Friday. Good morning, good morning. Grab a cup of coffee, pull up a chair, and let's do Bible study together. I'm Elizabeth Inman. Dream big today. <laughs> and every day. That's right, Donna. And every day. Good morning, Eileen. Eileen, you were on my heart a lot last night. Woke up at various times, and it was all love. Just telling you, it was all love, Eileen. I went over how Miss Eileen and I got to meet. She found us here on Facebook, checked us out, decided to come to one of our retreats, and the rest is history. Eileen and I are bonded at the heart from now on. And as you guys all know, Eileen rarely misses one of our Bible studies or one of our new nuggets. She rarely ever misses one of our retreats. Love you guys. We got all kinds of people on this fabulous Friday. There's Rita and Debbie and Jan and our other Debbie and another Debbie and Donna, who's at the table with us as well. Miss Lynn, good morning, good morning. Our faithful ones are with us this morning. There's Cheryl. Hi there. Good morning, good morning. Okay, so we've all settled in. I thought about us just pulling up a chair, grabbing a cup of coffee. There's Michelle. There's Miss Michelle and Cindy. Oh, Cindy, tomorrow's your day. So excited about your retreat tomorrow. <laughs> Glad the Bible's got there in time. Um, and I just thought about, I, I just, I just thought about this venue here. You know, um, I've got stuff in the background because my mom moved into that part of the house over there. This is her chair. The back's turned to us. Mom's um, coat is here on the bench behind me. I've got a lot of stuff here on the table. Um, you know, I started sitting here at this side of the table. <clears throat> If you could actually see it, the Lord's Supper's right up there above me, but because of the angle of the cameras, um, I cut off most of the Lord's Supper. I don't work to have the perfect setting. My hair flips out here. I'm going to get that fixed today, but it flips out here on this side because I got the bright idea. I wanted to let it grow a little longer for the winter time. And then Donna's, the flip's cute. Oh, my word. That's my, that's my whole point. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I don't want to even, I don't even want to try to put on an air of perfection. <laughs> I, I did for too many years, too many years. And you know what? <laughs> that's a good thing you guys can't hear everything that's being said at the table right now. <laughs> But it goes right along with what I was going to tell you. I I did strive for something like that for too many years. And the sad part is, you know, how hindsight's 2020. Looking back, the more I strived for it, the more I failed at it, the more people could see <laughs> the imperfections. <laughs> I think it goes way better when you give that up. <laughs> but I just got to thinking, I hope. I hope that it makes it very appealing. We're just people, ordinary people doing an ordinary life together, together. And that leads me to March the 10th of 2023 Bible study. It really does. I mean, I'm sitting back with my cup of coffee and you know what the tendency for the Psalms, from the Psalms to the New Testament, to the Old Testament reading today. Let me see. Let me remind myself about the Proverbs. Well, probably even the Proverbs. They're all tied together today. For me, they were all tied together. The tendency is, I just want to shake my head. But just about the time, I just want to shake my head. I can't shake my head. 
because those people are me. That's me I'm reading about. I mean, really, really. Peter, Peter is me. The disciples, they lived, they ate, they drank, they slept, they, they did life with Jesus. Every single day for 365 days, for three years here on this earth, Jesus in the flesh, here on this earth, they saw more miracles than what they say you could put into hundreds and hundreds of books. They said the books couldn't contain all the miracles Jesus did while he was on this earth. And yet, when they came and they arrested him, they scattered like sheep. And just like Jesus told Peter, when Peter said he would die for him, oh, Peter, before the, before the crow, <clears throat> before the crow, the rooster crows, thank you. Before the rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. And he did. I mean, for however long it was that they, the Israelites, had left Egypt, not even counting the number of miracles they saw while they were in Egypt. The water turning to blood, the grasshoppers, the frogs, the nighttime but it wasn't nighttime, the darkness that, that set on them. All of the things they saw, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, the firstborn being killed, the Passover they experienced, the Red Sea parting and they, they, they crossed over on dry land, the manna coming down from heaven, the water coming from a rock, the very presence of God being being with them in the form of a cloud by day and a fire by night. <clears throat> and however long that was, from the time they crossed over until this moment in time that we're reading about in Numbers chapters 14 and 15, all they heard about was the promised land. This, this promise that God had given them. And now they're there. And they brought back grapes so big that they had to be carried on poles that hung in between men carrying them on their shoulders. That's how big the grapes were. That's how plentiful the harvest was from the land flowing of milk and honey. And they were so scared, they refused to go over. They, di they just didn't believe God. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe him. I remember a promise sitting in my living room. It would have been 21 years ago when I cried out to God for my two teenage boys at that time. Situations happening. When I didn't know what the future was going to hold, and I remember I remember a very frightened 40-something-year-old mother who had gone through a divorce, and I'm talking about me, not knowing what the future held for her two sons that she loved more than life itself, not knowing what the future held, and, and, and about 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning, crying out alone in my recliner in my living room to God, not knowing how to pick up my Bible at that time and looking for promises. And I remember, I remember like it was yesterday, God whispering and telling me that he'd take care of my children, that he'd take care of my boys. I'll remember that. I will remember that into heaven with me. I'll never forget that that morning at 1.30 in the morning that I knew that God whispered and told me that. And fast forward, I don't know, eight years, 10 years, and there I was crying out to God. Oh, Lord, what's going to happen? Oh, Lord, what's going to happen? Whether it's a job situation, whether it's a, whether it's a, 
a marriage situation, whether it's a grandchild in the hospital, a desperate situation, whether it's, I mean, did I start this whole thing out today saying how I wanted to sit back in my easy chair this morning, get my cup of coffee, talk about those disciples and how they scattered after living life with Jesus for three years in a row? How in Psalms today, only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. I, I mean, do you understand that when I sit back and I'm going, oh, I'm wringing my hands. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh my gosh, that person that I love so much is so depressed and I just don't know what's going to happen. And oh my gosh, that I'm saying there is no God in a way. I'm saying there is no God. I might as well be saying. I mean, what was the disciples saying with their action when they just scattered like sheep? I mean, Jesus told them they would. He quoted, he quoted, he quoted a scripture. Um, that was in yesterday's reading. Yesterday in Mark 14, verse 27. On the way, Jesus told them, all of you will desert me for the scriptures say God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. I might have been tempted to sit here on this beautiful sunshiny spring day and just shake my head at their unbelief. But all of these scriptures tied together for me today. All of them, all these stories tied together for me today and serves to encourage me today. Serves to show me where I still fight unbelief. Serves to encourage me that what I've been telling you to do every day is exactly what we all need to be doing because life is hard. We need to be mining for our nuggets, our promises, God's promises. What is he telling you about your life today? What is he telling you about your life today? What is your guiding scriptures? I'm telling you, I'm using guiding scriptures like I've never used guiding scriptures ever before. I, I went to go read my guiding scriptures this morning like I've been doing and I'd left them in my office <laughs> because I'd used them. I'd used them as late as seven o'clock last night in my office. I don't tell you that to brag. If anything, I'm telling you about how desperately I need them. How desperately we need each other. I mean, we'll come and put on a retreat in your city. I've got a team that will travel. <laughs> i got a group of women that will come put on a retreat in your area. You have no idea how these retreats bind us together. Bind our hearts together so that we've got a network of women that when the going gets tough, the tough get going that I can just pick up the phone anytime, day or night, and I've got an army of women. Now, we have that. I know that I know that I know I could go to Dream Big today, and I could post that I need prayer, and I'm going to have prayers that's going to go out across the globe because we have bonded together. Our hearts have bonded together on YouTube and on, on face, Facebook. Man, do you know how powerful that is? And, and, and it's God's love that he wrote down in this book that, bond, that bonds us together, bonds us together. Hmm. If you're still looking for guiding scriptures, and you haven't found them yet, I'm gonna give you two suggestions to try. I may give you three suggestions to try and I want you to make them personal. 
first of all, if you're brand new in the Bible, if you're brand new, I want you to use Psalms 139 as your guiding scriptures until you until you get to a place where you're reading your daily Bible enough that you start getting your own guiding scriptures. Use Psalms 139, and I want you to read it first, and then I want you to read it as though God wrote it just for you. Put your name in it, and then I want you to write it out. And when you write it out, write it out. In, in with your name in it, as though he is saying it directly to you now if you've been reading your bible on a regular basis for a while i want you to use isaiah 61 and i want you to do the same thing with isaiah 61 i want you to make it personal for you instead of it being that isaiah the prophet is prophesying to the israelites make it to you personally to you elizabeth this is what god is saying and if you happen to be somebody that fear overwhelms you, use Psalms 91 and put your name in it and write them out. Write them out. It uses a different part of your brain. Put it in your wallet. Put it in your purse. Put your guiding scriptures on your bathroom mirror. Put them on your refrigerator. Tape them to your refrigerator, put them where you eat breakfast, put it on your dashboard, speak them out loud over and over and over again every day. I'm telling you, they're powerful. There's nothing more powerful in our life. Do you understand that he's teaching us how to pray by writing down his words for us? When we pray his word, I'm not sure there's any more powerful prayers than praying God's word. I, yeah, I just, um, I read today and I just thought, oh my goodness, they were right there. And I thought, how many times was I right there? I've got some projects going on right now. I mean, you guys know that we're working on some brand new technology for our ministry that I just really believe is going to be, this is about round three or four. <laughs> I don't know how many rounds of new technology. I mean, between the first time I bought a microphone or the first time I bought a tripod, <laughs> if I don't count all those times, um, but I tried some online, some live stream software that we bought, that we paid a monthly subscription for. And I just wasn't able to figure it out. I, I just wasn't, I just wasn't able to figure it out. And that thought of don't give up, don't give up was was always there. I'm, I'm not, it's not easy for me to give up. I, it isn't easy because I know that oftentimes we give up right when we're at the Jordan River and across the Jordan River, I can see the promised land. I know that. I've, I've read the book many, many, many times. <laughs> but by golly, we've been introduced to some new software. And it's going to be an app. I mean, we're going to be able to announce to you that Dream Big Today has its own app. Dream Big Today. Any day now, it's going to happen. <laughs> Those of you who are contributing to that, thank you. Those of you that have partnered with us to help make this possible, thank you for that. I hope we get many more partners that's going to help us expand that. But I'll tell you what, <clears throat> um, the resistance, when, when it's going to be glorious, whatever it is, when it's going to be glorious, the resistance is going to be great. And I know that. I know that. It's going to be hard when God, when God has something big, dream big, <laughs> get ready for the resistance. I mean, is that not what he was telling them? Is that not what he was preparing them for? By He wanted them to know and to get ready. And he wanted them to know how much they were going to need him. Yes, it's the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land that I'm going to give you, that I'm going to go ahead of you and I'm going to fight for you, that I'll fight the battles for you is full of giants. 
you'll have to go and you'll have to take over the territory. He wanted them to be mentally prepared. He wanted them to be spiritually prepared. They, they needed to be physically prepared. And instead, they turned on him. They turned on him instead. And, and then they just flat out wanted to quit. And then when they wanted to quit, and then they realized the error of their ways because they made God flat out angry. See, you and I will never experience that kind of anger, not as believers. We will never experience that kind of anger from God because Jesus took all that wrath. All of that anger, Jesus bore on the cross instead of us. In our place, Jesus bore that anger for us. So we will never experience that anger. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But back in the Old Testament, when they saw the anger, then by golly, they can't wait to march on over across the Jordan River. And isn't that just like us? Isn't that, it, uh, I know, not you. Isn't that just like me? Isn't that just like me? You see, I can learn so much from these scriptures. Even the Old Testament stuff, it cautions me. It cautions me. It shows me my carnal nature apart from God when I'm not in the spiritual. If, when I'm not being led by the spirit, which is just another way of saying of being led by love. When I'm being led by love, love is patient. Love is kind. I'll wait on God to show me and to guide me and to direct me when I'm being led by love, when I'm being led by the spirit. Yeah, that, that's what I got out of the reading today. That's just my summary of today's reading. It ends with Proverbs, which really, it still sums it all up. Riches won't help on the day of judgment, but right living can save you from death. Can save you from death. Right living can save you from death. See, death isn't necessarily this physical body dying. Death is when I do what I know is contrary to the righteousness that lives inside of me. And then in my mind, I start dying from the inside out and I'm tormented. Oh, don't get me started because I'll just start preaching. I'll, oh my goodness, I could start talking about that for the next 30 minutes. And it's a fabulous Friday. I want you guys to go enjoy this beautiful Friday. I love y'all. Have a great weekend.